We're going to talk about power, guys. One of my favourite upgrades. What we pay. That normally comes standard with the X Country and Excaliburs. The weight of our caravan. Test to see how well this caravan is insulated. Would we buy a Crusader again? If you're in the position where you have a CPAP machine. On our contract, it said we're getting Sirocco fans. Our lovely rear view camera. I'm Lani. And I'm Vidat. This is our son, Zeki. And together, we're going to take you on another Oz adventure. Welcome back. Today, we're going to take you on a... Do you have to scratch when I started? I'm itchy. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, stop. Okay, right. Welcome back. Today we're going to take you on a walkthrough tour of our new Crusader Musketeer Palace fully composite caravan. This might be a bit of a lengthy one, so if you want to skip to a particular part in the video, uh, we follow the time codes on the screen here um, or follow the chapters in the description below. Let's get started. All right, so a bit of the outside. First off with the electrical stuff. We've got three cables here. First, regular 12 pin. Uh, something to note with us, uh, well, if you're running a three-way fridge, you've got to power your fridge um, in cooling down via your electrical plug. We don't have to do that. We're running a compressor fridge, so um, that runs off the battery, so we didn't need to wire that in. The other two are your regular Anderson plugs. Well, one's your regular grey, so this is what charges our battery. And then this particular one here, the yellow one, um, is for our carafan, so our dust suppression system. All right. Next we have our toolbox, uh, this was an add-on that we wanted because uh, we wanted to cook outside so we wanted to throw a barbecue in, have potentially another fridge as well uh, or a generator, um, but with this you get an extended A-frame as well so this is normally a shorter van but it, it is longer when you get the toolbox. So price wise, I'm trying to give you a price of all the extras around the caravan, uh, some of the stuff was bundled in so it's sort of hard to give an exact price. So this is one of the things that we can't actually give a price on because it was bundled into our price that we got on the show. So next we've got the front window. This was a big thing for us. We weren't sure whether or not we wanted to have this as an add-on. Uh, we heard some mixed reviews um, on you know, how well they keep the weather out. We'll show you some footage of you know, just some of the views that we get in the mornings. Uh, so yeah, pretty good. Now that we have it, we're super happy, so can't recommend it anymore. Um, next to that, we've got our outside light. So we thought we're gonna have the toolbox late at night. If we want some light, uh, it's probably a good idea to have these. So these are an extra, and the price for these ones uh, as an add-on was 320 bucks. All right, so now we'll move around to the side. So keeping with lights, we've got our lights out the side here. They're actually bug lights as well. Um, it was, sort of mentioned to us that it might be a good idea to get bug lights. So what bug light is, if no one knows, your regular light is white, and then you've got amber lights. Uh, so they're supposed to detract uh, bugs. From our experience, it doesn't really work. Um, so, you know, you can try yourself, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste the money. Those as an add-on were 260 bucks. All right, so next we've got the speakers. Uh, a lot of people were saying that they hit and miss. Uh, we actually enjoy ours. They work pretty well over Bluetooth, loud enough. Um, you know, you're not gonna be Rage it, rage it, rage it. Next we have our awning. So our awning is uh, longer than what becomes factory. So I think, don't quote me on this, I think they're 14 foot uh, long. We got the extended 16 foot. So we just like being able to have a lot more shade and cover. So we opted for that longer uh, awning. With that, uh, we thought we'll make use of the extra real estate and get bigger bunk windows as well. Uh, so we like to have uh, just more sunlight coming into the caravan, so it's good to have that bigger window. Um, on bunks, we only went two, so this caravan can come with three or two bunks as a configuration, but what was important for us was storage. Uh, we've got obviously Zeki, little man, um, and we thought, you know, more storage the better, so where you don't have the third bunk down the bottom, we actually have a storage hatch there, so it's come in real handy, uh, but we'll show you more of the inside, because cool thing about it is you can access it from the outside as well as the inside underneath uh, the first bunk. Um, now, pricing on the awning was around about 270 bucks, um, but the big price on this one was the windows. So you're paying over 700 bucks uh, to have those 
extended window, bigger windows. I'm not sure if it would be a lot more if you had the third bunk window. We've only got two, um, but yeah, something to take into consideration if you want the bigger windows. Forgot to mention with the awning as well, we've got some accessories um, outside of our dealer. So, uh, two seconds. Lani knows more than me. Lani. <laughs> All right, so with the awning, um, if you're interested in an anti-flap kit and some curved roof rafters, the Aussie Traveller anti-flap kit seems to be super popular. Everyone's happy with it. So we went with that as well um, in a size medium. The, the size is dependent on how far out your awning comes. Um, for the global awning that comes with the Crusaders, the medium Aussie Traveller kit works well. So with the curved roof rafters, we recommend not going with the Aussie Traveller, but rather with a brand called Supex. They seem to have a rafter that's only uh, has 25 to 35 mil curvature, which is actually perfect for a brand new awning. Um, if you're unaware, the purpose of the curved roof rafters is to partially stop flat, but mostly to help with water runoff. So when you've got a brand new awning, if you're going with something with a lot of curvature, you're actually gonna stretch it. So you wanna have the least curvature possible. Um, unfortunately, Aussie Traveller, their smallest curvature is 95 mil, um, as opposed to the 25, 35 that we ended up getting. So yeah, as you can see, there's a bit of a difference there. So we opted for the different brand for those. Back to the dap. All right, next we have suspension. Um, I forgot. What, what come with this standard? I'm, yeah, I'm not sure what, what the standard was, to be honest. We wanted semi-off-road. The idea was we wanted to go on a beach, Fraser Island, hopefully one day, fingers crossed. Uh, so we wanted something semi-off-road. So we upgraded to the Tough Ride 3.3 ton suspension. Um, now, I don't know much about suspension and I don't know much about Tough Ride um, itself. I mean, we got warranty booklet from Tough Ride and registered all of that jazz but when I look under the caravan uh, we might have some shots of this uh, it's all petters running gear um, so it's all the, the, everything the dampeners springs everything's petters so I'm not too sure what's tough ride and what's not but the pricing for this upgrade um, is just over three grand um, so that was a big upgrade for us all right so coming around the back recovery points I said I want to go on the beach I don't know when and if we're going to need them. They look cool. Musketeers now, they all come with this style of sequential indicator. When we put ours on order, they didn't. Um, now when you buy a big musketeer, put it on order, you'll get the same style, but you'll only get 12 LEDs. Um, this is an upgrade from Excalibur and its country. Uh, so the Excalibur and its country rear taillights and indicators, you get 16 LEDs. Uh, and the cost of these guys as an upgrade were... 250. So 250 bucks was the cost to upgrade to the X Country Excalibur tail lights. Our lovely rear view camera. We've mentioned this in a previous video, guys. Uh, but cut a long story short, we thought we were getting a safety day. We ended up getting a Sphere wireless camera. Um, we'll show some footage of the actual, um, you know, how the camera works uh, in the monitor inside the car. Look, it's not too bad. Uh, we had a previous uh, comment on our earlier video mentioning to put antennas actually on the monitor which really helps so thumbs up i forgot who that was but we'll put your name down somewhere around here so thank you very much for that because yeah they were just sitting in the box we had no idea the monitor actually came with antennas um now look i mean go for the sphere if you can go for the safety tape if you can um you know it, they, it does a job uh, and, you know i again i would prefer a wired camera um so if, time being we're going to go with this we do have a warranty claim with Crusader so hopefully uh, they'll be able to hook us up and get the actual safety day one installed for us okay let's come around the side so in our previous video we mentioned um, our water fill points so where you would normally fill your water using these caps here we've gone down the route of actually having a quick connect uh, so essentially plug it in turn these two valves open uh, and that fills your tanks up so the reason why we got that quick connect was so you don't have to manually fill with each tank so we've got two 95 liter tanks and then one 95 liter gray water tank um, so you don't have to fill each individually the idea is you just plug it in turn your tap on set and forget and it fills both tanks up at the same time do you think it's been good uh do i think it's been good yeah i mean i'm lazy so it's you know it's a good convenience i think we pay 200 250 bucks um to have that add-on that normally comes standard with the x country and excaliburs uh but doesn't come standard with the musketeers so it was definitely an add-on that i am definitely enjoying now uh because yeah 
it's not fun just standing there with a the hose down, you know, filling your taps, uh, filling your tanks up. So, yep. Yeah. Come around, come around, come around. Let's go. So, your regular stuff, guys, it's nothing exciting. Um, you've got, sh oh, shower. <laughs> Outside shower, everyone said, what a waste of money. Nope, not a waste, man. I love this thing. I pull this out, wash my feet all the time because I'm a dirty grub like that. The price of that was part of our package as well, so I'm not sure. But they will come with it, so really. No, they don't. I'm pretty sure they do. No, they don't. They don't? No. Double check. And if I'm right, include this in the footage. If I'm wrong, cut it. Anyways, coming down this way, uh, tunnel boot goes around to the other side. What I want to show you guys, and come in closer, come in closer. We're going to talk about power, guys. Um, now, uh, I wanted some. I wanted to go off grid, and I wanted a setup that could easily, um, you know, support us and the little one. Well, whilst we're off grid, so a little bit of specs that we've got here. So I've got 800 watts of solar. It's not a massive amount, but it's not a little amount either. Uh, and the reason why we picked 800 watts of solar is because I've got 400 uh, amps of lithium batteries as well. So we wanted to keep a good ratio of uh, you know, essentially just doubling the number. So whatever battery size I had to double the amount uh, I had with my solar. So 800 watts of solar, 400 amp hour of lithium batteries. With that, we've got a 3000 watt Red Arc uh, inverter running an inverter. Um, now, it's a little bit different to, uh, you know, uh, running your normal 12 volt appliances. You actually have to turn your inverter on and off every time you want to use 240 volt when you're off grid. Um, so, the way we do it on this fan is the Red Arc inverter has its own remote switch. Now, this switch is located inside a cupboard uh, in the caravan itself. And not only do we need to switch that on, but we also need to switch on a switch over on the RCD here. So this panel here shows uh, the switch that I'm talking about. So this guy here is currently switched to number two. Uh, that is on for us. And essentially this means that I can now go back inside the caravan and switch our red arc switch on. So once this is on, the red arc switch is on, our inverter is working, and now we can use 240 volt appliances. So uh, it's anything from our washing machine, uh, our oven, um, our microwave, and then our air con. Um, quite annoying. I think some of the older musketeers actually have this switch inside the same cupboard as the uh, inverter switch. Um, so every time I need to use the inverter, I need to come outside, flick this up on, and then go back inside to turn my stuff on. And uh, for people that are new to caravanning, what is an inverter and why are we turning it on and off? We're turning it on and off. So the inverter itself, to my understanding, helps convert uh, your 240 volt appliances uh, so they can work off your battery system. So our battery system is a 12 volt system. What was the second question? Why are we turning it on and off? So we're turning it on and off because when you turn the inverter on and not use any appliances, it draws a little bit of power. So there's some amps that it needs to actually run. Um, so that's why you turn it on. Uh, we turn it off so it, we don't use up our power. Now we could, we've got a big enough battery system to just leave it on. Um, you know, with the solar that we have, it's not really a big issue. Um, but I think my OCD sort of kicks in um, with regards to having it on but not really using it. So you turn it on when you need 240, you turn it off because it, it uses battery. Um, so that's why we turn it on now. All right, do we want to take a look at the power system inside now? Yeah. All right, battery system. Now we are running a BM Pro. Um, look over your shoulder there, Lani. This is the monitoring system we use. Nice color screen, touch screen. It's actually, I think, an Android tablet. Uh, but essentially, you see all your tanks, including your gray. Um, you've got zone lighting. You've got your pumps. Uh, and you can see what your battery is doing at any one time. Uh, we can have a quick glimpse here and see that at the moment, um, we're getting 20.8 amps of solar. Uh, so 10 is essentially being going straight to the battery, and the other 10.8 is being used currently. So that's our current loads. Um, and if we're plugged in to our car, the auxiliary light will highlight orange, and if we're plugged into mains, likewise. Um, so that's pretty much how we monitor our system. Our system uh, is under the bed. So, da da da, 
this is our system. So we have, as mentioned, two batteries. Uh, we have our shunt here. We've got our red eye converter um, and the pistol resistance. Pistol <laughs> resistance, how do they say it? That's perfect. Yeah, does that work? Does that make sense? Okay. I don't know how to say it. I'm not French. <laughs> there are different ones out there on the market uh, that BM Pro have. We have the Odyssey. Um, so that's, I think, the, the latest and greatest when it comes to BM Pro. Um, Battery Plus 35, 2HA, this is something that you definitely need if you're running a lithium setup. They do have lower grades, but with a lithium setup, you need that model apparently. Now, a big difference with our setup is you have a DC to DC charger here. So that's what that red arc piece is there. We had a 30 amp. So BM Pro comes out with their own 30 amp DC to DC charger. Um, but we needed something bigger than that. Um, the dealer had initially quote us, quoted us for that, and then later on uh, in the uh, build stage, he remembered that, oh no, we should go a 50 amp DC to DC. So DC to DC charger, for those that don't know, um, that is what uh, pulls in power with that gray Anderson plug at the front of the van, uh, which then charges the batteries. Um, so. That's what that's for. Now, I mentioned in a previous video that we have a bottleneck in the system. Our bottleneck is the battery management system. Now, this particular battery management system can only input 30 amps of solar. Now, based on my AutoLX calculations, we should be able to bring in 50 amps on a sunny day. Um, so we're losing out 15 to 20 amps uh, on potential input power from our solar because of that so what we're planning on doing is rerouting this so instead of having our solar come directly into the battery management system we're actually going to wire it up into our 50 amp dc to dc charger hopefully that'll actually bring up uh, our charging ability for these big battery setup i mean now we've been off grid twice and it's been pretty good even with the bottleneck i don't think i need it but again, my OCD is like, ah, oh, we should have it. What we calculated on a hot 35 degree day um, was that we could be pumping our aircon full blast at 20, 20, oh no, it's actually 19 degrees. Um, it was running full blast 9 degrees and this management system was saying we had four and a half hours left of full time. Uh, now, I guess the aircon does turn on and off automatically when it reaches that temperature and then turns back on again. Uh, so it would waver between four to five hours, but it was usually around the four and a half hour mark. It said we had left over out of our 400 amp hour battery system that we had there. So take that as a reference. This aircon we have is the Bell Air 2800. Uh, I'm not sure how much better or worse this is compared to your Ibis 4 Dometics, for example. Um, but as a reference, if you go the Bell Air, Running a 3000 watt inverter, you can pump your aircon for at least safely save four hours using that many battery. So with um, the 400 amp hours of battery and 800 watts of solar, it is plenty. Uh, if you're not pumping your 240 volt appliances, it's more than enough. Um, so yeah, it's plenty of power to run overnight. You're not gonna run out. Um, one of the important things for us was I use a CPAP machine um, and uh, I'm running it off 12 volt now, but before I knew I could run it off 12 volt system, I actually had my CPAP machine plugged into the 240 volt, uh, running off the inverter overnight. It barely did anything with regards to the battery. I had plenty of power the next day. Uh, so if you're in the position where you have a CPAP machine and it is uh, a 240 volt system and not a 12 volt, you could easily run it overnight uh, off your inverter and it's going to be perfectly fine. Um, so just make sure that you get 12 volt plug set up next to your bed. We have we had USB uh, ports there, but I got mine switched out for my CPAP and it works wonders. Just to finish up with the uh, power system all up uh, as an extra, uh, the van itself came with, I think it was 120 watts of solar um, and 120 amp power AGM battery. With our upgrade, I think it came to just over 7,000 bucks to have everything that we've just shown you. Uh, yeah. Now with that, this insulated caravan, um, this composite caravan, that was one of the biggest sellers for us. We were 
super excited uh, with regards to insulation. We ran our Ancon for probably a good, as I mentioned, well, I don't know, we, we didn't run it for four hours, but we were running at least a couple of hours. It was 35 degree heat outside. It was a good test to see how well this caravan is insulated. Not that great. Um, I feel like the insulation is great. Uh, and it does an awesome job um, just on its own, but there's just too many gaps in this caravan for it to really insulate the caravan properly. So on that 35 degree day, we were running the aircon at 19 degrees, we we're pumping it um, and we would turn it off, or we would turn itself off when it hit 90 degrees, just for it to turn back on or us wanting it to turn back on after five minutes. Uh, you really felt the heat come back in, or the, the well, sorry, not the heat come back in, but the cold dissipate. Uh, so bear in mind that you are getting an insulated caravan, but on those extreme days, it's not it's not really that insulated. Um, and yeah, you you'll be because they're out. We thought we thought that you know we would just turn the aircon on, cool down the cold caravan, turn it off, and we'd be sweet. It would hold the actual cold air in, but it wasn't the case, was it? No, three to five minutes. Yeah, and you it, could start to feel like, oh, I think I want to turn it back on now. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, I mean, we have nothing to compare it to, but it's not, I guess, as insulated as I thought it would be, especially with the floor, because I think a lot of caravans, um, like, they put insulation in the walls, but the big thing is the floor is not insulated. So I really thought that that was going to make a big difference, but unfortunately. So um, just so you know, if you're getting a well-insulated caravan, you are about to a degree. Um, it's really, you, you, if you're on an extreme day where you need to run the heater or the air con, you just... It holds the temp a little, but it's yeah, you'll you'll be running it nonstop. It's it's not gonna hold the temps in like we thought it would overnight. Do you wanna just mention our dust reduction while you're here? Yeah, so the caravan, we were looking at getting a Dometic um, dust reduction system. Um, which is standard? Which is yeah, well no it wasn't standard. <laughs> Through our 18 month wait, we then learnt that um, we learnt of the caravan. Um, it wasn't something that was mentioned to us on the day. Uh, we've heard some mixed reports with the Dometic setup. Um, so it you have to change a lot of the filters uh, often, especially if you were going on rough dirt tracks. And with the price, uh, with the caravan upgrade, it was an extra $900 from the Dometic. I was uh, sorry, the Dometic uh, dust reduction system that we initially planned for. So all up came to just over seventeen hundred dollars to have the caravan so not cheap but uh who likes dust no one likes dust so worth it now i'm done i'm spent i want to relax now hold the camera lane's going to give you a tour around the caravan itself um so we'll go from there inside of the van so the colors we went with are the nx340 metallic gray and for our bench tops and splash back and tabletop was white Como. Um, the extras in here specifically were our black pack, which is $900. So with that, you get the black sink, black fans, black reading lights throughout the van um, and black handles. If you're into that look, we love it. Originally, we were gonna split up the pack and do some stuff black and some stuff not, but I'm glad we went all out. It looks really good. Um, the next thing that's not standard is our fridge. That's a 240 litre compressor 224. fridge. 224. 224. Yeah. Thank you. Litre compressor fridge. Uh, I believe to upgrade was around the... Could be 240. <laughs> 224, 240. One of two. One of those. Yeah. Um, I believe the upgrade was around $630 for that. With the fridge... Hang on, you can have it back. So we have a compressor fridge. You can either get a three-way fridge or a compressor fridge. Quick lesson, what's the difference? Your three-way fridge runs off your 12 volt, it can run off your gas, or it can run off 240. We've got a compressor fridge which only runs off your 12 volt or your 240. The biggest difference is with the three-way fridges, you need time to cool them down. Uh, and then once they're cool, you then throw your food into the fridge and you set out. Now when you are driving, the main purpose of uh, the three-way fridges running off your battery is just to keep the temperature. Uh, so it doesn't actually keep cooling or get colder. 
Um, we've learnt though that with the compressor fridge that we have, or all compressor fridges, they run directly off the battery and uh, as long as you've got a beefy enough battery system, what it's going to do is actually keep cooling your uh, stuff that you've got in the fridge. So we will, straight away, at first we were worried about keeping it up, open and shut, open and shut, you know, just making sure that it was shut and not keeping it open for too long. Really, it doesn't matter how long you've got this open for, the compressor's just going to keep pumping and probably run harder to keep cooler. So, um, but it will keep cooling at the end of the day. So if you get a compressor fridge, don't worry about you know, needing to cool the fridge down first before you put food in. No. Nah. We rocked up the other day, put all our fresh food and cold stuff straight into the fridge, turned the fridge on. By the time we got to our campsite, which was two hours away, it was already cool. Uh, I think just on its own, it takes around about an hour to get to temp. So compressor fridges are awesome. Um, I would go compressor fridge. All right, get back to you. Um, if the nut so kindly turns around, we've got our bunks, which were pretty standard with a bunk fan. Um, like he mentioned earlier, we only went the two bunks instead of three because we don't foresee us needing that. Um, and that gave us the extra storage down here. So as he mentioned earlier, you can actually access this from the outside um, boot as well, which is super handy. What is an addition in this space is the fans. So the, for the two fans, I believe it was an extra 650-ish dollars, somewhere around there. Um, so yeah, we were supposed to, well on our contract, it said we're getting Sirocco fans. These are actually safety day fans, and I believe that that's what all the new vans are getting at the moment, coming out with. Um, they look exactly the same. Our dealer mentioned to us that it is the same fan, just it's got a different brand stamped on it. I looked up the price of the fan, they're pretty much the same price. So, I mean, they work. Um, I haven't compared them to the Sirocco, but by all reports, I think they operate the same. I guess the only thing I would be looking out for moving forward is longevity, I guess, if they stop working sooner than expected. But they work fine. So, safety day fans, an extra 650 bucks for two in the box. Um, moving into the bathroom, we'll do a bit of a swapsies. Moving into the bathroom, the extras in here are this tiny little bench top and this cupboard. Now all of this um, was around the $600 mark to upgrade, but it's probably one of my favourite upgrades. I would not take it back. As small as this is, um, you will not regret having the extra space just to be able to have somewhere to like put your toothbrush or put your soap dispenser or your face wash. Um, it's super handy to have the extra space and up here for we use it for toilet paper so that way we can keep all of our toiletries down in here and not use up the space for storing toilet paper um yeah so really grateful that i got this upgrade because without it there's really nowhere to put stuff and not much storage in here while we're in here i just wanted to mention some people um opt to go with an extra of a bathroom window um, and I noticed there's a lot of comments around whether you need it or you want it for odors in the bathroom. Let me just tell you, I'm actually very pleasantly surprised. We use the sachets for the toilet. Um, actually, I'll just show you that up now. So we use these. You just drop one in before you use it. Flush, flush a bit of water in there so it can um, sort of break up. The smell is better than a normal toilet. Like, I don't get any smell so and having the vent with the fan i think is more than enough um personally i'm i don't miss not having a window so um, if that's something you're thinking about something you're concerned about that's my opinion um but yeah up each each to their own uh while we're in here i'll just give you a quick sneak at the black shower in case you're interested in getting the black pack <laughs> genius let's show them the shower while it's locked Great work. All right, let's so, try that again. While we're here. While we're here already. Let's have a look at the black shower. Jesus crying. There we go. Now that shower head has three settings, just so people know. It's like a jet setting, it's like a rainfall setting, or it gives you both. Yeah. If you're interested, it's a pretty big shower yeah. space. And you also get the black sink, obviously. Yes. You get black towel rails and black toilet roll holder. Cool.
What do we got there? We've got tips against under the van. I mean, this is standard, but we've got our washing machine in there too. Which we yet to try. Yeah, we haven't tested that out. But uh, looking forward to test that. Yeah. So guys, that was our walkthrough video. Let's talk about the weight of our caravan based on all the options that we have in case people are interested in knowing what the tear mass is, mm -hmm. um, if they choose to option up their van or have a solar set up like we have. Yeah, so we, I mean, it is it is fully composite caravan, so naturally that comes with, um, you know, it being lightweight or lighter than most of the other caravans out there on the market. Um, so with the uh, caravan itself, um, with the toolbox, extended A-frame, the whole solar power set up, um, it came to a total of 2,552 kilograms. We've given you the costs of a lot of our options along the way. Um, so I think now it's probably a good idea to summarize what we paid uh, with those options and overall with the van. So we paid for our van at, uh, we got it on show deal at the Rose Hill Super Show. We paid- 85 grand, 18 months ago. Um, and on pickup, we ended up paying 104,000 bucks. With all those options that we just um, talked about. There might be a few things we may have missed out on, um, but uh, yeah, all together, started at 85, ended up at 104 drive away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, bear in mind that might be a bit different now because the cost of vans go up every year, but um, yeah, that's what we managed to drive out of there for. So it is a big investment, but I have to say that, I, I mean, I know we've mentioned a few issues that we have with it here and there, especially in our initial um, impressions video. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it. Um, but really, overall, we are very happy with the van. Like, those issues in the scheme of things are minor. Uh, I think with any new thing that you get, it's never going to be perfect. There's always going to be little things wrong with it. And I think the thing that matters the most is... Um, the customer service at the end of the day, I think if everyone makes mistakes and if the dealer is willing to and the manufacturer is willing to come to the party and help you rectify those issues, then to me there's no harm, no foul. So Still um, early days. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. You know, it's only a few things we find now and I'm sure we'll find more things yeah. uh, the more we travel. Um, but yeah, it's it been super easy to work with Crusader is and our, and our dealer, so um, yeah, we'll keep you guys updates on you know what happened especially with the, the safety dave camera yeah. um, situation that we've got would we buy a crusader again so like based on our first impressions 100%, yeah, yeah we would sure. um we've been to a couple more camping shows since we had our van on order um and you know because it is such a big investment you sort of question like did we make the right decision and we had a look at some of the other vans at the show and I don't think you could really compare the build quality, to be honest. No. Um, yeah. So we're really happy with our decision. I don't think we would have made a different one. Definitely not at this stage. We'll obviously keep you updated as we, it's very early days, as Vidat mentioned. But um, yeah, fingers crossed it just keeps going on this trajectory and we keep enjoying the van. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're going to follow up with this. I mean, we'll get... We'll review certain things as time goes on, but we'll do a, a major six month review and a 12 month review and um, just to you know see how the actual caravan stacked up and held together you know over that time. Yeah. Again, we are weekend travelers, so we're not traveling full time. So uh, it might not be a true representation of how well the caravan can or uh, can't do things. Um, but yeah, we'll try to be as honest as possible. Um, we don't get any kickbacks from Crusader, we paid you know, for the caravan out of our own pocket. So um, it's good to, to provide uh, honest feedback on this sort of thing for, because it is a major investment at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a house on wheels essentially. So uh, yeah. So that about wraps up our walkthrough video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, we got a few more videos lined up. Um, you know, been an amazing response from you guys from our first video. If you guys have got any questions, um, you know, just yeah, leave a comment below. Yeah, thanks guys. We really appreciate it and any likes or subscribes you can be bothered to pass on. We are a new channel, so it would be much appreciated. Cool. See you See next, you next time. time. Ciao. Bye. Bye.